Hello there, that's the Harris here, and welcome to an Open TTD Tips video. Today we'll be looking at train and railway tips, so let's crack on. Don't have two of the same turn in a train length. So here we have a number of different corners. Now going round a corner can slow a train down, but if you do it right, it will allow it to continue without slowing down. Here on the far left you can see a train going round a very sharp corner. It is turning right 45 degrees and then in the very same square turning right 45 degrees again. This will slow the train down. The train here where my mouse cursor is, the second train, is turning left 45 degrees and then left 45 degrees again. You can see that the first part of the engine has turned onto the second part whilst there are still four carriages going down the line previous. Again, this will slow it down. That is because these train lengths are length 5 and these, what, these uh, diagonals are not long enough. Here we have a length 5 train on a diagonal which is also length 5. You can see that the engine has just turned the second corner but it has cleared the first corner. And the same with these other two trains. The trains are shorter than the diagonal length. When this is the case the train will only be going through one of the two diagonals at once and that means it will not slow the train down. However, you can see down here that we have a train that is just turned um, in both of these turns. So it turned left 45 degrees and then turned right 45 degrees. This will not slow the train down. It's only when you have two of the same turn in the tr same train length. So if you want to keep your trains going nice and speedy through your networks, make sure your corners are longer than your trains if you're turning throughout a full 90 degrees. Have depots off the main line. When a train goes into a depot, it slows down. You can see this one here that's just going in the bottom depot. It was going a lot slower when it was entering the depot than if it would be if it was just going down the line. These trains going in and out of the depots do cause congestion if you don't have them off the main line. So what you may do normally is something like this, where you just have a depot directly connected to the line. Don't do that in most cases. Have a slipway so that the trains can come off the main line. If it has to wait for another train to go in or out of the depot, leave enough room on the slipway for the train to wait and that, get it off that main line so it's not holding it up. Use long stations. So sometimes it's good to use long stations. Maybe even if you only have a train that's three, four, maybe five or six in length, you may want to make a station that's a lot longer. For example, here I'm making a 12 length station. And you might say, why would you do that? It's massive and also I don't need it to be that long. It does cost a little more in maintenance. However, the more astute of you may have noticed when I was dragging it, that it has a much bigger catchment area. The catchment area is that purpley bluey sort of colour around the station and you can see we're covering a lot of the town. If I made this, oh, I don't know, maybe four in length, you can see that we're missing all of those houses at the top part of the city. But with the station the size that it is, we capture a good number of those as well. Longer stations, bigger stations, more catchment. More catchment, more passengers, more passengers, more money. Leave at least one train length between junction blocks. So you see here we've got a couple of stations and some track. And we've got a junction block over here and a junction block over here. And the gap between them is only one or two squares. This means that if a train is waiting for one of the junction blocks, it actually blocks the other one. Now this can be avoided just by making sure you space out your junctions enough so there's enough room for a train to sit between the two. If you do that, you won't end up with deadlock situations like this. Prioritise reliability when choosing trains. So when you're choosing your train engines, there are quite a few different options to choose from. And also you have a few different stats, the weight, the speed, the cost, the power, the traction effort, running costs and also whether, when it was designed and how long it will last. And of course, the reliability. It can be quite difficult to know what trains to use in what situations. But as a general rule, it's usually better to go for ones with really good reliability. This means you have less breakdowns on your network, 
stopping other trains and making the whole thing flow a lot better. So here you can see we've got the SH30, that's an 85% reliability, we've got 85% reliability there, 84 and 85 and then it drops off to 62 and 57. Definitely wouldn't touch those trains now. But looking at these guys over here, they're roughly about the same reliability, so I would probably pick one of these three, and then I might choose one of the other stats to make a decision on. Maybe it's the running cost or the speed. But reliability is definitely a good starting point when choosing your engine. Use waypoints to split up platforms. So here we have a station which is servicing a factory. Factory has a number of items coming in, livestock, grain, steel, and it also has goods going out. If you have lots of trains going through here and the factory is producing lots of things, you may end up with all the platforms full of goods trains trying to pick up the goods. And then there's no room for the input trains to come in and drop them off. And you end up with a situation where it all just clogs up. What you can do is use waypoints. So here we've got the line that comes in splitting off into two different sections. So we could put a waypoint here and we can put a waypoint here. Using these two waypoints you can guide the trains to different platforms. You can see here there's a break in the track so only the number two waypoint goes to these four platforms and then the first waypoint goes to these platforms. That way you can make sure that you've got the goods trains picking up the goods on a couple of platforms, leaving the other platforms available for trains to drop off the supplies. This can be used in a number of different ways, this is just one example, but using waypoints like this to direct trains to particular platforms can be very useful. Use tunnels. There are a couple of reasons why you might want to use tunnels, and I don't always follow this tip myself, but the main reason is, is that tunnels do not have a speed limit. If we look at this fantastic bridge here, you can see that it's got a speed limit of 241 kilometers an hour. So various different bridges will hinder you as you go along. Going through your network and making sure your bridges are upgraded constantly throughout the different parts of your network can be a big pain. It takes up time and it takes up money. Building a tunnel means once it's in, it's done. You don't have to worry about it in the future. Use RORO stations. RORO stations are ones where trains come in one way, through and out the other side, and sometimes off or back and round. Terminus stations are the opposite, and trains come in one way and go back out in the same direction. If they're going in a terminus, then a train coming in would have to wait for a train coming out. Whereas, in a RORO station, a train coming in wouldn't necessarily have to wait for a train going out. This is the main reason why I generally recommend them. Now, there are instances where they are not appropriate, but if you're not sure or you're new to it, definitely use RORO stations. The flow of the trains works so much better. There is one small downfall, and that is you have a bigger footprint of track on the other side. So if you're trying to nestle your station in close to your town for a really good catchment area, you have to take that into consideration. But overall, they're a good option to use. Use double depots. A double depot is where you have a depot facing another depot on the other side of the line. This allows trains to go in one depot and then out again whilst another train goes into the second depot. You'll see an example of that here. So here we have two trains coming along the track. The first one will enter one of the depots. And then as it's leaving, the second train will be able to enter the other depot. Now, of course, this costs more to put a second depot down, but it allows the trains to flow and move a lot quicker. This is particularly good around stations and junctions. Use depots before junctions. So you may have a junction something like this, and what you should do is put the depots something like this as well. Now, if a train is travelling along the track and it decides it needs to service, then it can do because the junction has a depot right there in front of it for it to do so. However, if a train is approaching a junction and doesn't have a depot there and it decides it needs to service, it may go down a random line that you don't want it to, just so it can go down to where it can find a depot. 
Having them here stops them needing to go off in random directions, getting stuck or even clogging up lines at other stations that don't need to have those trains at them. So there we have it, 10 open TTD train and railway tips. Can you think of any tips that I didn't include? Pop them down in the comments and let everybody know. Thank you very much for watching. If this video was useful, consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and get the notification bell. But that's going to be all from me. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.